In November of 2018, I was lucky enough to go to the awesome country of Costa Rica to scout out an area for a potential future workshop. That scouting mission was a huge success. Oh man, it was so beautiful. I got so many cool images. And I now have a workshop set up for late 2019. The first week of this workshop sold out instantly. I was lucky enough to arrange a second week. If you wanna come with me to Costa Rica and take some awesome pictures, you can find a link to that workshop in the description below. For those of you that can't go, guess what? I'm gonna take you in video form and this is what day one was like in Costa Rica. Come on, let's check this out. Our journey starts simple enough as we climb aboard a small plane in San Jose, Costa Rica and head for the skies. Once we're in the air, the world unfolds below us like a lush, vibrant garden. Mountains covered in green tower above tropical valleys that seem to endlessly move in every possible direction. Rivers, both large and small, snake their way through the vibrant green land below. If Costa Rica appears this beautiful from the air, imagine what it must look like once you immerse yourself at ground level. Let's head into the jungle and see what we can find. Small crocodiles are plentiful and always worth a shot. I get down on a lower level and I grab a quick shot of one resting deep in the mangroves. Look at those teeth. So many and they're so sharp. I hear a splash in the water behind me and notice a much larger crocodile silently watching from the water. And that's my cue to move on. I notice movement on the ground just a few feet away. Leafcutter ants. An entire miniature road full of them. This is backbreaking work for these little insects, and it looks as if this one has bitten off more than it can carry. I follow their little trail up and over a tree branch until I find a massive highway full of them. These ants are absolutely amazing. They don't actually eat the small pieces of leaves they are carrying. They take them back to their colony, grind them up, and then use them to grow fungus. That's right, these little insects are actually farmers. They farm fungus, and feed it to their larvae. This isn't a new thing. Entomologists believe their relationship has been going on for millions of years and that the ants have actually domesticated the fungus, but this relationship gets even crazier. The fungus that these ants cultivate is under constant threat from a parasitic microfungus, but the ants carry a special bacteria that keeps the parasitic fungus away. Now that's just incredible. All right, let's head a little deeper into the jungle and see what else we can find. Whoa, look at all of these beautiful pink flowers. They look like little paintbrushes. These are mimosa flowers, and they're so vibrant and full of color. The aroma coming from them is just amazing, and it looks like these little flowers have attracted more than just me. Look at those little birds bouncing around in there. Let's see if we can get a closer look. What's this hiding behind the mimosa flower? Whoa, look at that beauty. Hey, wait, no. But, ah, there you are. This amazing little bird is a banana quit, and it looks like it's having a great time drinking up lots of nectar from these mimosa flowers. And what's this? I think this is a Tennessee warbler. What's it doing all the way down here in Costa Rica? That's a smart little bird. It knows a great location when it finds it, but there are other birds buzzing around these amazing mimosa flowers. One of my favorites, hummingbirds. And these are unlike anything I have ever seen. Look at the amazing colors on this bird. Absolutely incredible. Let's get some shots. This little jewel is a charming hummingbird, and boy does it live up to its name. Look at the crazy colors on this tiny little bird. The intensity of those colors really depends on the angle of light. All the bird has to do is move just slightly, and bam, you get these amazing iridescent colors that makes these little birds look like they're covered in metallic armor. You can only find this amazing bird in Costa Rica and Panama. And guess what? This awesome little bird wasn't alone. This little bird is a white-necked Jacobin, and from the looks of its colors, I would guess it's an immature male. One of the totally awesome things about photographing wildlife in Costa Rica is the incredible amount of color you get in your shots. The foregrounds, the backgrounds, they're so full of color that each shot really looks like a beautiful work of art. Let's see if we can get a closer look at this beautiful little bird. There we go, that's much better. What an amazing display of life. Look at this bird, simply incredible. And these last few images are the perfect example of what I mean by your images being loaded with such vibrant colors. You have all that vibrant color in the background, 
that amazing pink flower in the foreground, and who could overlook that amazing little jewel of a bird just hovering right there in the middle? All right, it's time to jump in a four-wheel drive van and hit the road in search of some more awesome wildlife. There'll be plenty of time for hummingbirds in my future Costa Rica videos. And our first roadside encounter, owls. A cute pair of tropical screech owls who are lazily enjoying their day high up in a tree. I'll never pass up an opportunity to photograph owls, even if they're sleeping. And while I'm taking these shots, I hear my guide exclaim, Howler monkeys. I look up over my shoulder and spot this howler monkey watching me from the trees above. This is my first time seeing a monkey in the wild, so I grab a couple of shots before the monkey disappears into the thick canopy above. But the canopy was holding yet another beautiful surprise, this impressive female slatty-tailed trogan. This rainforest is definitely alive, and it isn't long until we spot yet another monkey. This one's a spider monkey, and apparently this monkey doesn't want the world to see its face. But once it gets comfortable high up in the trees, it doesn't mind turning around and giving me this look. It's then that I see something moving in the trees above me, and I turn to find this amazing black mandibled toucan sitting in the canopy. This is the largest toucan in Costa Rica, and what a beauty. The toucan doesn't stick around, and neither do we. Time to hit the road again, but we don't make it very far because we run into these awesome people who have a young, injured toucan. Apparently, monkeys like to eat toucans, but this one escaped even though it was badly injured. These people are nice enough to take it to the nearest sanctuary where they'll see that this bird gets the help it needs. We finally arrive at our destination, a tropical oasis where the ocean meets the land and sun-kissed palm trees blow in the breeze. I sit down in the sand and take in my surroundings. To my right, the beach stretches south and large tide pools form in the calm waters. Further up the beach towards the west, stones smoothed by the constant erosion of sand and surf decorate the shoreline. Directly overhead is a massive tree that appears to touch the clouds. And to my left, a sun-soaked beach that looks like it belongs on the backside of a grocery store postcard. I park myself between a couple of trees and let the sound of the waves wash over me. This is a tropical paradise in every sense of the phrase, and right as I'm about to drift off into an afternoon nap, the sounds of scarlet macaws filter through the crashing waves. I look to my right and see flashes of red streaking across the sky. I raise my camera and fire off a shot as one comes in for a landing. A pair of them have landed in the tree above me, and they both curiously peer down at me and my camera. One of them lowers its head and jumps into the air, catching me completely off guard. The bird, proud of its jump, looks down at me before lowering its head again. This time, I recognize the posture, and I ready my camera for the jump. The macaw leaps into the air, flying through the large opening in the branches. It lands in another smaller tree before readying itself for yet another jump. It leaps into the air and comes flying right over my head. I think to myself, what is this crazy bird doing? And then I see it land on a palm tree full of food. It pulls off a sea almond and flies back to a tree. And with the dexterity of a trained acrobat, the scarlet macaw balances on one foot while holding its tasty morsel of food with its other. It uses its bottom beak to scrape off some food and bring it to its small finger-like tongue before swallowing it down. Absolutely amazing. Who could ignore grabbing a few quick shots of these beautiful birds as they casually munch on their late afternoon snack under the shade of a huge palm tree? <laughs> what a life. Again, what an awesome display of life and color, but our beachside oasis was hiding yet another surprise. A troop of squirrel monkeys have decided to take in the amazing ocean views. I grab a quick shot as one of them peers down at me, and then it quickly runs to the canopy before taking one last look over its shoulder. I think to myself, wow, what cute little monkeys. I see yet another squirrel monkey running along a fence post. It has its back to me, but I ready myself just in case it turns to look before making that final jump. The monkey quickly turns to face me and I stop dead in my tracks. Those warm fuzzy feelings I had earlier quickly change to terror as I realize I am now face to face with some type of zombie monkey. Hey, maybe I've watched too many horror movies, but this is one creepy looking monkey. And as if the monkey can read my mind, it casts me this one final look that seems to say, that's right, I'm watching you, buddy, before disappearing into the forest. We climb back into the van and hit the road, and it isn't long until we spot one more awesome photo opportunity of the day. 
I step out of the van and capture this gorgeous hawk sitting in a tree on the side of the road. I look over at my guide and say, wow, this hawk is beautiful. What kind is it? He glances back at me and says, that, my friend, is a roadside hawk. I respond and say, no, seriously, what is it? The guide laughs and repeats himself. That's a roadside hawk. They always hang out on the side of the road, so they're called roadside hawks. And what a great way to end my first day in Costa Rica. So that was just one awesome day in the beautiful country of Costa Rica. The workshop I have planned is six full days where you can expect to see stuff like that and a whole lot more. And like I said earlier, the first week sold out instantly. The second week I expect to sell out pretty fast as well. It's a first come, first serve. If you're interested, there's a link in the description below. And let me know if you had a favorite part of the video. I really enjoyed the whole thing and I can't wait to share more with you. Don't forget to click that thumbs up, share this video, that's really helpful. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that because I have a lot more stuff planned. And until next time, I'll see you later.